This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home, so you know, at some point in time you're going to have to venture out outside the 806, so that'll be... That'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Sure. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. King Craig reports in, Jamie, is uh, headed to Level Land. He said it's very foggy headed towards Level Land. So okay. uh, be careful, careful, King Craig. Remember, don't use your brights. I mean, it's, it's what you want to do. But it's not what you're supposed to do, is to use your brights. Okay. Have you? And I'm I'm guessing not. But <laughs> the uh, the old rich guys of the NFL are kind of going after each other right now. <laughs> Goodness gracious! Uh, Jim Irsay, uh, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts, who has had his own documented challenges. I don't know that he was. Any of those have been worthy of him losing his franchise, but basically said, and this was the first time an NFL owners basically said this, um, that there's some merit for um, move, removing uh, Dan Snyder from his uh, Washington Commanders football team ownership. Um, he called Snyder's missteps as an owner, particularly with uh, workplace misconduct gravely concerning. I believe there's merit to remove him as owner. There's there's consideration that he should be removed. They're not going to vote on it at this meeting. Uh, the league requires 24 of 32 owners to approve such a vote, which has never been done at the NFL level. Mm-hmm. But it sure seems like Daniel Snyder has... <clears throat> seems like there's merit, right? Oh, it does. Now, whether or not that's going to... They're actually going to put it to a vote and vote him out mm-hmm. is a different story. But, yeah, it definitely feels like there's merit. <laughs> right. I don't think – I think Jim Irsay just made, like, the most uh, duh comment ever. Right, yeah. right, right, right. It's just uh, he, was, he was gutsy enough to say it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the commissioner of the NFL, who, remember, his bosses are the owners of the NFL, told reporters that he has asked the owners to, quote, reserve judgment – on Snyder until attorney Mary Jo White completes her ongoing uh, investigation. He said he has no issue with Coach Jim Irsay speaking out the way that he did earlier. Um, so he says, on one hand, let's, let's kind of hold off here until we get the investigation. But on the other hand, hey, Jim, you say what you want to say. So he's, he's walking a fine line, <laughs> right? He's sure. Wa- he's walking a fine line. Um then the other the other thing that came out this NFL owners meeting has been just been full of chuck full of all kinds of interesting issues. Stan Kroenke, who owns the Los Angeles Rams, <clears throat> who took the Rams from St. Louis to Los Angeles, he's been in this lawsuit uh, with the city of St. Louis, uh, as has the NFL. Uh, they've ha- had a settlement of seven hundred and ninety million dollars. So now it's like, okay, who's going to pay the tab? And Kroenke thought he was going to get quite a bit of help on that. Um, But as it turns out, he's been paying for the attorneys, which he probably should. And um, he's going to owe $571 million. The rest of the money will come from the other uh, NFL owners. Those guys were somewhat surprised earlier this year when they found out they would be contributing to the bill. They're like, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, what did we do? Yeah. (laughs) You know? So seven and a half million was deducted from their revenue sharing um, payment. Teams were surprised to lose the money because they had expected Kroenke to foot the bill entirely for the settlement. Kroenke at one point in time threatened the NFL by saying, "You know what? I'll just go. I'll just do my own deal with St. Louis and broker it, and leave you guys hanging with the rest." And then they figured out a way to to make that work. But five hundred seventy one million dollars is what he's going to owe uh, the city of St. Louis or the county. Blah blah blah. For that okay so this goes all the way back to 2017 because hope his kids don't miss any meals no a big he's, bill uh, he's gotta pay he's he'll he's okay i mean you know again 12 and a half billion is what he's worth according to bloomberg so it's not like 
writing a traffic ticket, but still it's got to hurt a little bit when you give up $571 million. I would imagine. I mean, if there's a Mrs. Cronky out there, she's like, well, you spent your 571 I'm going to go spend my 571 <laughs> right? <coughs> sure. Sure, right? And if that's not enough, you've got the NFL owners who are working on a new contract for Roger Goodell, who apparently has this bonus-laden kind of deal um, that this past year paid him you know, upwards of $128 million to be the commissioner of the National Football League. I, I don't know what kind of pandemic cut he took, Jamie, but I know that a lot of people in the league office, you know, we saw those reports took cuts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know that he took a 10% cut, but his compensation over a two-year period from 20 to 21 was nearly $128 million. So they're working on a new contract, Okay. And so they had to vote on the new contract to get it going to negotiations with Goodell. And um, the vote was uh, 31 to 1. Mm -hmm. The one naysayer was? Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones. Who told Robert Kraft, who's kind of had his own issues off the field, so to speak. <clears throat> he said... You know, not so pleasant way. Jerry Jones has had plenty of issues off the field too. Oh, no question. Yeah, that's not no, no question. He's like he's no he's choir boy. Squeaky. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no doubt about it. Who he said, uh, "Don't mess with me." And um, Mr. Kraft said, "Excuse me," because <laughs> it yeah. wasn't quite so pleasant as "Don't mess yeah, with me." I think it was an F word in there. Yeah, yeah. it was. And then, uh, and then Jones says, "Don't mess with me." Um, Jerry has issue with how the terms of the bonus are outlined that they're a little too vague for him. You got a lot of consternation in those owners meetings. Mm -hmm. A lot of rich old angry men, you know, mm -hmm. getting after each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody's going to do a throwdown or anything like that. And Kraft mm -hmm. just got married. He just, he had a, he had a big party in New York, invited a bunch, all of his friends, including Tom Brady, who skipped a walkthrough with the uh, team against the Pittsburgh Steelers. To go to a wedding, he didn't. I don't know if he knew it was a wedding, but they apparently it was a surprise kind of wedding kind of deal. And uh, and Brady then showed up on Sunday, and they promptly did not do very well against the Steelers. And then he got mad at his offensive lineman for not protecting him. <laughs> <laughs> what a charming league, right? <clears throat> did you get all this on TMZ? No, no, ESPN. <laughs> I thought I pretty well wrapped it up in a pretty pretty fine little synopsis for you. I knew that you would be just highly uh, interested in that. I just thought it was intriguing. I'm a little surprised this wasn't on, I think it's TNT, where they love drama. Isn't that what their tag is, I think? Mm. Yeah, I think so. That's, that's, I think it is. Mm -hmm. All I hear is drama, 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 drama. Uh, a lot drama. of drama. Yeah, a lot of, lot of drama for you know the guys that are... Seemingly, like billionaires. They can, they can do no wrong with their league because the consumption of uh, television and eyeballs on the NFL grows every year. Mm -hmm. It does. Uh, Risa, massive. Risa reporting that fog is rolling into the West Loop and 19th Street. Just, just rolled into the studio. <laughs> <laughs> rolled into the studio as well. Well... <clears throat> you know, I thought she was watching on TV and she was going to say, it looks like the fog rolled in in front of Jamie's <laughs> eyes. <right now." laughs> eyes rolled back into your head. Well, I just, no, they're just getting really heavy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't mean to, <clears throat> I don't mean to bore you. I just thought maybe you find some or any of that, uh, somewhat fascinating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, the part about owners yelling at each other, I, it's, it's I mean, I mean, you mentioned one of them's paying a fine of five hundred and seventy-one million dollars. It's, 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 it's a settlement. <laughs> it's not even a fine. It's yeah, a settlement. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. You're right. Um, <clears throat> that's just like man, how that's that's big money. And then, um, every knowing everything that we've known that has gone on with with Snyder. I mean, at 100%, the guy needs to be removed. How is he still an owner? Right. Yeah. And, but I'm, I am intrigued if he is going to, as he said, 
start throwing dirt at everybody else because then it might get a little bit interesting. Yeah, it might. <laughs> if he starts throwing shade and mm-hmm. dropping secrets from Jerry Jones and Roger Goodell and all that good stuff, ah, that might get interesting. That might. That might. Mm-hmm. We might see where the secret sauce is. And there's some reports that Snyder leaked the John Gruden emails that led to his dismissal. But there were only three of those, right? 640 this morning on the Morning Drive. You're listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. A little bit later on tonight, uh, we'll have uh, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. That'll be at 8. And then the Rangers playing at Seattle uh, tonight. And also bringing some humor to your day. Was it pretty big? Yeah. I mean, it was impressive. It's, yeah. Was it fascinating? It was, I thought it was fascinating. It kind of smelled, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. 19th day of October, 2022. Here is Senior Jeff McGuire with this day in sports history. Yeah, 1923, going to kick us off today, guys. Ban Johnson persuades American League owners to prohibit boxing in their parks. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that, didn't, that didn't last very long because the Yankees would do that Yankee Stadium with those big prize fights for years. 1933, Berlin Am- Olympic Committee votes to introduce basketball into the 1936 mm. Olympics. 1949, A's trade second baseman Nellie Fox to the White Sox for Joe Tipton. I'm not going to say that worked out well for the White Sox, but it really did work out it well did. for the White Sox. That was, I mean, he's one of their legendary players. He's like in the top five second baseman all time. Like when you look at career stats, he's, yeah, that's a steal. One of the few things we've gotten right. 1974, Detroit Pistons beat the Trailblazers in Portland. This is in 74. Okay. I mention this because their next win in Portland, Portland over the Trailblazers was June 1st, 1990. Holy smokes. Yikes. 1987, Woody Woodward, Woodward, Woodward ugh, resigns as New York Yankee GM. Lou Pinella is named the GM, and Billy Martin is named the New York Yankees manager for the fifth and final time. You think Billy Martin and Lou Pinella is manager and GM had any disagreement? <laughs> Never once. Two pretty level-headed guys. I bet they agreed on everything, Jamie. What are you talking about? I bet there was never any consternation between those two. I think Woody Woodward was a uh, was a pitcher. It seemed to me like I. He was one of those baseball cards you always got in your pack, okay, back in the day. Uh, Pinella and, yeah, Billy probably probably would have been interesting to see be a fly on the wall. <laughs> Earmuffs. <laughs> 1991, longest NCAA football game at the time, three hours, 52 minutes, as Rhode Island beats Maine 52 to 30 in six overtimes. I don't know how you get a score of 52 to 30 in six overtimes, but I also don't remember the overtime rules in 1991. And three hours and 52 minutes is rather pedestrian today. That's like an afternoon kick at the Jones. Yeah. That's what? That's really odd. Yeah. 2000, th- 2005 National League Championship. Astros beat the Cardinals four games to two to advance to the World Series. And in 2008, the American League Championship took place. The Boston, uh, the Boston, the Tampa Bay Rays beat the Boston Red Sox four games to three. It is National Seafood Bisque Day. You're probably out on the bisque, aren't you? Yeah, I don't really know what a bisque is. It's like a soup, right? Kind of, yeah. It's a it's a uh, a cold soup, isn't it? I think that's right. I think it's the okay. cold. Yeah, I'm out on that. I'm completely out. Happy birthday, former Red Raider baseball player Josh Tomlin, 38 today. Mm-hmm. John Lithgow, 77. Michael Young, 46. Mr. Batflip himself, Jose Batista, is 42. And J.A. Happ is 40 today. And on this day in 1982, the automaker John Z. DeLorean is arrested and charged with conspiracy to obtain and distribute 55 pounds 
of cocaine. Yeah, was DeLorean was acquitted of the drug charges <clears throat> in August of 84, but the legal woes were only beginning. He soon went on trial for fraud and over the next two decades was forced to pay millions of dollars to creditors and lawyers. Nevertheless, the DeLorean occupies an important place in automotive history thanks to its starring role in the 1985 film Back to the Future. His full gullwing sports car is one of the most famous cars in the world. And that is this day in sports history. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for the word of the day. All you have to do is go to double com and enter in the word when I give it to you, and then you'll be qualified to win $10,000 from double T973 and the home zone where they make your house a home. Um, boy, it's a... Uh, they're not, they're not waking up happy uh, to be Braves fans in Atlanta today with what's transpired with their baseball team over the last week or so. Maybe they're getting over the uh, the loss and they're just in the mourning period. They are the defending world champions. Braves is your word at 645. Braves. Go to double t com and enter that in to the secret word contest. You'll get qualified. The more chances that you get in, the more of a chance you have to win. We'll give it away on November the 18th. The word of the day next comes up at 845 this morning. And then uh, they'll play again today during Tech Talk at 445 this afternoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There's your secret word. I think the Braves fans are basking Braves. in the glory of their Falcons taking down the Niners this okay. weekend. Uh, so okay. They're, still, okay. they're like baseball season <clears throat> what? Yeah. Who? We're on to the NFL. Our, we're, fark, we're our right. Falcons are rolling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of sports history, last night, uh, somebody makes this point, and we, Jimmy and I talked a little bit about it briefly off the air. Darvin Hand made his NBA head coaching debut last night, coaching the Lakers. They took on the defending NBA champion Golden State Warriors. Takes and it a, was ring night last night for the Warriors, too. Takes a really special man to keep me for rooting for Darvin Ham to keep me from rooting for Darvin Ham. Mm -hmm. And the Lakers just happen to have that special man in uniform. Right. <laughs> I hate that he's coaching the Lakers. I wish he wish he had gotten a different job. Like anywhere else? Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah, or, anywhere. Or that maybe the LeBron had decided he wanted to go back to Cleveland or, or take his talents to, you know. South Beach again or wherever. Whatever, right? <laughs> wherever. Uh, this report, bisque is a thick, creamy soup served hot, usually containing seafood. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm still out. Still out for the most part. I like my soup. Like, if you have soup, do you like it really hot or do you like it just kind of hot? I mean, I like it boiling hot when it comes off the stove. I I pretty much like everything really hot. Yeah. Yeah. Boiling hot would be would be what I'd. I mean, I do. I will let it cool down though. I'm not gonna like tear up the inside of my mouth sure, over it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, right. There's that. Uh, Pepsi Man reports in this morning, and Pepsi Man's a Yankee fan. He's happy this morning. He says, good morning, guys, from Crystal Lake, Illinois. Just want to tell JL how about those Yankees. And then he says this, Houston, you have a problem, LOL. <laughs> Listen, I'm all for making fun of the Astros there, but let's get the line right. It's Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, That's how the line goes. Okay. Because it's Apollo 13 saying the line. Yeah, It's calling Houston saying we have the problem. That's the line from the. That's the line from <laughs> the Apollo. He's getting all irritated here. <laughs> but that makes no sense with his point. I, his point is Houston. You have a, a problem. problem, right? But he's quoting quote unquote. Well, no, he's not. He's <laughs> twisting the he's quote. Twisting the quote. Yeah, right. And that's the part that bothers me. Let's get the quote right. <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> of all of your takes ever, I'm. I think you're confused I, on this. I grew up in Houston. The number he's of not trying to quote it. He's twisting it to. Here we go. Let me give you. Let me show give you, his fandom. Let me give you a quote. He's back not there. trying to quote it. Steady, Henry. Your glue is melting. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't know where it came from, but yeah. I think it fits just now. It's when uh, Henry is trying to impress a much, much younger cheerleader. So, so we're just offended because he mixed up the. I've heard that space quote talk. misused about a million times in my life growing up in Houston. Okay, but on purpose. And yeah, he didn't used in this. He way. didn't mess it up. He, he did it on purpose. He did it on purpose. Yes, yeah. He, he just twisted it, saying, "Houston, you have a problem." 
If he said, Houston, we have a problem, that would be him making fun of his Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this from Bullfighter. Houston, Jeff has a problem. Go Yankees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chuck, Jamie, you have a problem. It's, right now, it's Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> That's the dude. Pepsi Man isn't including himself with the Astros. <laughs> College Station Red We Raider. love you, Jeff. We love you. Uh, this sounds like he's angry about something else. Like people no. have misquoted it when they've tried to quote it. Mm -hmm. And he lumped Pepsi Man in with that. And Pepsi Man was not trying to quote <laughs> it. He was twisting on purpose. So this is like... Previous scars just came out, <laughs> even though this one didn't fall into that category. It just still it irritated the scar. Yes, music's been playing. I know the rules. I'm supposed to shut up so Jack can get us out. <laughs> uh, College Station Red, Red Raider uh, port, reports in Snyder National Bank had a gold DeLorean in their lobby in the 80s and 90s. That would oh, have been pretty. That would have been pretty cool to see. Yeah. All right, we will talk some Red Raider football. They do not have a problem. <laughs> they are getting ready for a football game on Saturday. Okay, they've got they've got some problems. They've got some problems. <laughs> Your morning dose of coffee and sports. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T ninety seven three. Catch the show live weekdays from six to nine on Double T ninety seven three FM or on the Double T ninety seven three mobile app. Nice to have you with us. It is Wednesday, the day the work gets done with Jamie Linton, Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Coming to you this morning from the First United Bank Double T 97.3 studio. Look forward to you and hearing from you on the Yates Flooring Center chat line, benchmark hotline as well. A couple of hanging chads from last hour. Uh, Pepsi Man says to Jeff, you have a problem. <laughs> that one wasn't hanging. We took care of that one. Yeah, we took care of that one. Now um, we've done it twice. And our uh, our baseball uh, insider, connoisseur, doctor of all things information, uh, Mike Gustafson, whom you'll hear from later on today on Tech Talk, says this about Woody Woodward. He played at Florida State, then went to the big leagues for a while, right? We documented that. Apparently, also, he was the skipper at Florida State in the late 70s, then took a front office job. Florida State then hired Dick Hauser for a year, who would then go back to Major League Baseball. And then uh, Mike Martin for 40 years. So how about that? 11. <laughs> Excuse me, 11. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> supposed to call him 11. Do his grandkids call him 11? Is that his grandpa name? 11? Grandpa 11. <laughs> me Ma 11. <clears throat> me Ma. Me Ma 11. I think, um, I think grandpa's one thing, but me Ma's another, right? But hey, there's probably some me Ma's out there. Oh, I absolutely think there's a Mima. There's Mima's out there. I saw one with a license plate the other day. Did you? It said Mima. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, I I mean, I'm sure it doesn't surprise you. I just I mean, to each their own. I have no issue with other people doing mm -hmm. it. I just I just want to be a normal name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And maybe my grandchildren will say something different, and I'll yeah. think it's the cutest thing ever, and I'll say that, we're sticking what, with that. Maybe that'll happen, but that's what'll happen. I will be really, really surprised if that happens. No, that that I, you know, I was gonna be I was gonna be grandpa, and then uh, he looked at me, and I was, you know, fifty pounds heavier than I than I was, and he accurately called me Big Paw. <laughs> I've got a picture of me holding him at about two fifty, and he's he's you know maybe six pounds and. Like, like, okay, this is why I'm Big Paul right here. But he didn't call you Big Paul when he was six pounds, did he? No, but, but he was, was going to say, what? dude could already talk. He's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely a Heinz. Yeah. If he was six pounds and already he talking, talking. Yeah, he talking, he's used words. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Man. I'll, I'll tell you what, nobody can hold it. Listen to Hines, man. It's this grandchild. Well, he's pretty smart. He's yeah, six he's pounds. He's six. pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> Do I sound like the typical I, one, right? No, you sound like typical Chuck. Yeah, right. <laughs> you sound like Chuck. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you know, six pounds, he's talking. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, Big Pa, how you doing? Oh, yeah. man. <clears throat> yeah, I'll tell you what, the... Uh, the boy wonder man, that kid's I mean, he's he is talking all the time now. He is he is a chip off the old block, man. But he's bigger than six pounds, right? Yeah, he's like twenty three now, but he's he's 
He's he was he set up the other day. He set up an obstacle course for him to run through. I'm telling you, Coach Kidley's going to have a going to have a sprinter. <laughs> he set up his own little obstacle course in the hallway. That's good. You know, he was like he wanted me to do it too. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, that kid's going to, he's going to be a trackster. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the other one's going to be a play-by-play man, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know what the other one's going to do. He's, he's, he'd probably be a lawyer because he seems to be able to kind of, you know, kind of state his case for different things. Okay. Yeah. She's got me. Wonder where he won't learn that. <laughs> he's got me pretty focused today. He's, he's, he's told, wrote on my coffee cup to be focused and he's, he circled it this morning. So that means it's it's really important for me to be Good. focused today. That's what I'm trying to All be right. is focused. Yeah. All right, seven oh five this morning here on the morning drive. Joey McGuire is the head football coach at Texas Tech University. We'll hear from him extensively tomorrow. You're going to hear a lot from him uh, today. Um, we've we've talked a little a little bit about this, but one of the things that he is um, kind of surprised about right now is his team not getting turnovers. Here's Coach McGuire on the defense right now, not getting the turnovers because they want this plus three. Big initiative on taking care of the ball on offense and a turnover circuit during uh, defensive practices, and they just haven't gotten the turnovers that they've wanted yet. Man, you know, that's been the – if you ask me the one thing coming into this year that you're like, uh, what's been the biggest surprise? Uh, The biggest surprise for me is us not creating the turnovers. Um, us not, you know, we had the opportunity to have between two and four interceptions against OSU, and you know we don't catch the ball. Uh, that was kind of the difference of the TCU OSU game. They did intercept the ball. You know, they had the opportunity to intercept it, and uh, their player intercepted the ball. We had the same opportunity, you know, and we didn't come down with it. And so um, that's something that we really stressed. We stress it all the time with the take three stuff, and I mean, there's. It's nonstop. I mean, we, they get text every day. You know, um, I think a lot of times uh, what's kind of scary with West Virginia, whenever you get it, when you get a game like that, you know, it kind of gets you going. Uh, turnovers happen in bunches. And um, so, you know, we, we've we got to start, and I thought we did a good job of protecting the ball against OSU, and we were better. We were still minus one. Um, the defense has got to step up and start creating some of those turnovers, and, and that happens with, you know, playing through the whistle, um, getting off blocks uh, as far as recovering fumbles, but then also you got to catch the balls they throw to you, and we, we've got to do a better job of that, you know. But it's always, you know, it's a huge emphasis. We start practice off with it. Um, every Tuesday and Wednesday, we started practice off with it yesterday of our uh, ball security and then our takeaway circuit. And, we, you know, we just got to keep at it. And it's going to turn at some point um, defensively. And then we just got to keep protecting the ball and putting our guys in good situations to, to make sure that we're throwing it to the right guys in the red and black. You know, West Virginia had a plus three against Baylor. Uh, plus they had a blocked extra point that led to two points that were really <laughs> – you know, critical in that football game. Um, Baylor fumbled the ball three times and threw an interception. West Virginia threw just one interception. Yeah, huge factor in that game. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, it's just this, where they come in bunches, you know, sometimes that that happens. Or you you get all of a sudden, you get confident and you start seeing, you know, players like, okay, well, he got one, I got to get one. And whether it's punching out at the right time or getting a little lucky or getting a little, you know, fortunate so to speak you know in terms of the ball just bouncing into your hands you know that's that's certainly what you you don't want you don't want to give up <clears throat> extra possessions especially to a team like West Virginia that can be that can be potent you don't want to do it really against anybody mm-hmm. i mean obviously it kills your offensive chances mm-hmm. and it uh, puts your defense in a bad spot but you know against a team that like West Virginia that looks like they can put up a lot of points uh, giving them extra possessions would uh, be pretty bad, you know, as far as the Red Raiders side of things go. I mean, it's it's just you're not um, crisp enough offensively, mm-hmm. you know, where you can give up a bunch of possessions and give extra ones to the opponent if you if you feel like you're going to win against good teams in the Big Twelve. Yeah, and, and we all know this. You know, there's no day off in the Big Twelve, especially. Especially this week, and then you know next weekend against Baylor, and then you go to TCU, and then you have Kansas, and you know just the green grass grows all around, all around kind of deal. You know, mm-hmm. it just keeps 
Mm-hmm. It just keeps getting harder and harder and harder and harder. So you want to make sure that you – TCB, Jamie, take care of the ball. Usually it's TCB in basketball. Take care of the basketball turnovers and points off turnovers is usually a big factor in, in ball games. But it's mm-hmm. been this case as well. I mean, he cited, you know, basically nine points that the West Virginia defense was totally responsible for with a scoop and score and with the two-point uh, return off of a blocked uh, extra point. So – you know, uh, I guess that would be eight. But anyway, the bottom line was um, they've been able to do it, and his team has it, and they were trying to correct that. Getting your sports day started the right way. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 Football Conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference? If Tech does not win it this year. Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five right. days a week together. Yeah. Why do, Why would yeah. we need to communicate during the weekend? <laughs> right. Save we it for the show. We, we, say, we do. We save it for the show. Just... Tune into the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right. All right. I'm going to let you give two answers for both of these questions. Oh, wow. Okay. wow. All right. Wow. I know you both like to talk, so I figure I'd give you some extra. I'll give us some extra. <laughs> both, both Jeff and I. Right? Okay. I, I don't want... think everybody ever really feels like we deserve any extra. Well, I think you do. Okay. You both work hard, <laughs> extremely hard. I would say that two hardest working men in our company right here are my, no, well, are my partners in the morning. Okay? And I mean that honestly. Well, thank you. Um, so looking at the Big 12, mm-hmm. thinking back to where you were at the beginning of the season, give me two teams that you were the most right about and two teams that you were the most wrong about. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning to, okay, I'm just kind of going back through. Well, the second part should be easier, right? Because we're wrong all the time. <laughs> sure, right. <laughs> well, I, I think that I've been wrong about Oklahoma and TCU. T- TCU has to be number one on yeah, my list. Yeah, right. TCU absolutely has to be number yeah. one on my list. Yeah, so I don't I don't disagree with you on that, but I would... I would say that probably the other one would be for me Oklahoma. I, I didn't think they'd be this bad, Jeff. Yeah, I don't. I don't have an argument for either of the the two bad ones. the The two good ones that I think I got right, and it's it's one loss. But Oklahoma State, I thought they were going to be in the Big Twelve championship game at the beginning of the season. They still look really, really good. Um, granted, they've they got the one loss right now, but there's still lots of football left to get played for them to get into that position. The other team I was right on, man, this Big 12 has been so upside down. It, it's hard to, because I wasn't right about Baylor. I've had them and had them win in the conference. I wasn't right about Texas, because uh, they've looked exponentially better than I thought they would look this year. Baylor's fall like Kansas State. I thought they'd be good. I didn't think they'd be necessarily this good, but I didn't think they would be bottom of the pack either. Mm-hmm. So I half point on Kansas State? I feel guilty about taking that one, but that's the closest answer I got. Yeah, as far as the good, I would say uh, o- Oklahoma State uh, for me. Um, and may- Maybe the other thing is is that I think that we all s- kind of looked at this and said there'd be parity in this conference and that the, there would be no just outstanding mm-hmm. team. And so that would be kind of the other thing that I think that we got right is that is that there is um, there's parity. I don't think anybody expected Kansas to be five and two at this point, regardless of who they're playing, because they've lost to cupcakes before. Yeah, it's hard for me to say that I've been too wrong on Kansas because I ultimately think Kansas is still going to finish near the back of mm-hmm. the Big 12 Conference. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. I think I'm with you on the two that I was most wrong about. I thought Oklahoma would be, uh, if not at the top, maybe second, but in the conference championship game, and they're obviously struggling at at one and three, I don't know, maybe they got their mojo back. But TCU, I mean, I felt like there was no momentum with that program. I didn't feel like Sonny Dykes was the right fit. I felt like they settled for him when they really didn't want him. I, we know he was like their fourth or fifth option, their mm-hmm. choice. But I've been I've been wrong there. But I still think there's so much to be seen from TCU when they start 
having some more difficult matchups on the road in Big 12 play. We'll we'll, we'll see uh, how that goes for them. But I, I feel like the ones that I've been maybe the most right about, um, I think Iowa State, I think I had Iowa State finishing yeah. eighth or ninth. Mm-hmm. Uh, just didn't think highly of them with as many seniors as they lost. And remember, they also had like a bunch of guys hit the portal, like 22 different guys. And I just felt like something was going on there with Iowa State, and I questioned whether or not they'd be a good football team this year. And, and you know, with with Matt Campbell always being kind of rumored to be going somewhere else, does that has that affected their recruiting? Has that affected their ability to retain guys? Or sure, you know, I mean, he's he's never really said. Hey, I'm I'm gonna die here, you know, mm-hmm. in Ames, Iowa. Yeah, you're gonna bury me in a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't say that I was right about Oklahoma State. I was until last weekend because I felt like they'd be the best team. Mm-hmm. And so at two and one, I can't say that I've been super right about them. Now they may ultimately turn in to the best team and and be the conference champion. I still think that's 100 percent possible. Um, so I, I think I have to kind of lean towards the Red Raiders because I felt like you were going to be a six and six team, and I think you got you're like trending in that direction. Mm-hmm. I absolutely think seven and five was possible, but I know that's a really boring answer because you like oh, I thought you'd be middle of the pack, and guess what? You're middle of the pack. Middle that's the pack, not, right. that's not really yeah, sexy or exciting. The question is about who you were right about. <laughs> yeah. and if, that, if you were right about that, that yeah. means you were right about it. Yeah. I I think I can find, you know, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be this high on, or that that I thought Texas would be this good. I wasn't as high on them, but um, they're clearly a little bit better than I felt. So it's hard for me to say I nailed any of them. But again, I thought the Red Raiders would be middle of the pack in a six and six team. And it feels like they're, you know, on the straight and narrow heading that way. Yeah. Well, the, uh, It'll be interesting because it'll be interesting to see what how, what the perspective everybody has after TCU and K State play this weekend. Like, okay, so if K State goes into Fort Worth and beats them, then you're like, well, okay, maybe you have to change your maybe you have to change your tune on K State a little bit. Yeah, you you have to change your tune. yeah. I, <laughs> that would include myself in that. Yeah, that would. But I mean, you, you know that because. You know, so is this three weekends in a row TCU's playing an undefeated team? I guess, yeah. Kansas, Oklahoma State, mm-hmm. and now – oh, Kansas State's only on undefeated in conference play. That's right. They do have one loss against Tulane. Yeah, so K-State is – but they're like you said, they're 3-0 and in the conference, so is, uh, so is uh, TCU. Mm-hmm. But, well. And I hadn't, even, I hadn't even looked to the Big 12 schedule yet this week. That's an interesting matchup. So there I'm going to go. go with the purple team. <laughs> I don't know which one will wear purple. You know, uh, so they'll have K State will probably roll out their blacks or something like that. That'd be so K State of them. TCU with all that red last weekend was just something. that's interesting. Uh, the other intriguing matchup this weekend is Texas and Oklahoma State. That game's in Stillwater. You know, if the Longhorns go in there and beat uh, Oklahoma State, you may have to change your tune on the Longhorns too a little bit. You know, up, get, even upgrade them even more, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, I've said now that I think Texas will be in the Big 12 championship game. Okay. So, so you think they're going to beat Oklahoma State on Saturday. But I also think Oklahoma State's going to be in the Big 12 yeah. championship game. So, um, yeah, this is that's that, that may be the best matchup of the Big 12 conference all season long. Because that, you know, if I'm going by off of – I think those two teams are the best teams, mm-hmm. are going to be the best teams, then that has to be the best matchup. Yeah. Uh, this from the Yates Point Center chat line. I called 7-5 and five for Tech with a bowl win, finish 8-5. and five. Okay. Um, this, KU has to be everyone's free space on bingo in terms of being wrong about. No one expected this from them. I, I think that's absolutely fair, but I'll think, I also think it's absolutely fair they could finish 5-7. and seven. I, th- I think they're going to finish near the back, just not yeah. at the back. So mm-hmm. definitely was wrong, but not like extremely wrong. Yeah. So, you know, can they can they get bowl eligible? That's the that's the that's the question there. Seven thirty nine this morning. Uh, going back to the punting uh, discussion. Um, let's see here. Um, do we get this? Special teams has been special. Yep. 
Uh, I, I would think our punter would know where to put it, common sense. Uh, JL, I feel and agree with your uh, hesitation on the kicker. I think Coach McGuire is trying to help save, help a kicker save a little face, and it comes right down to it. Uh, the kicker just isn't executing. Uh, number- and I appreciate Coach McGuire for, you know, standing up for his guys mm-hmm. and kind of deflect a little blame or whatever. I get it. And, I sh- and I'm sure there's also some truth to what he's saying, but I, I do think that just Austin Austin has struggled, and that just happens with yeah. athletes at times. Yeah. And you fight through it, and hopefully you get out of your slump as quick as possible. Uh, this, a number of our punts were from deep in our own territory. No reason to pooch a directional kick on those. And, and you're exactly right on that. Um, and those are the ones that we've kind of, you know, wondered about. It's like, is there something wrong with him, mm-hmm. you know, that have been short or just off angle a little bit or just didn't have the velocity that or the height that we've seen from uh, some of the other ones, especially from last year or even uh, the year before. Your morning blend of sports. K-State is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37-34 overtime win over number 22, Texas. And humor. Sure to tell them that. You, you suggested that. <laughs> and, of course, they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Hey, good morning. It is the Morning Drive on Lubbock Sports Station Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. So Patrick Mahomes' mama was in town yesterday, Jamie, mm-hmm. and speaking over at the Civic Center. Her name is Randy Mahomes. And uh, <clears throat> apparently a couple things that uh, that transpired from this talk, the uh, lucky lady there with the daughter number one, she took some pretty good copious notes for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Took some notes for me. It's good. Apparently, early on in uh, Patrick's uh, career here at Texas Tech, you know how they have the video board messages and things like that, where they ask the players a question, a personal question. Basically, it's just to kind of get to know you a little bit better, right? Okay. So they did one of those things with Mahomes, <clears throat> and uh, he uh, he texted his mom and he said, "Mom, you're going to be mad." And so she's like thinking, "Okay, what what did you do? You know, college kid, blah 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 blah." And um, one of the the question that was asked of him uh, for the video board for the big Jumbotron 5000, Raidertron 5000, excuse me, want to get the name right, Uh, what do you miss most about your mom's cooking? And his response was, she doesn't cook. (laughs) Okay, and that's not the big news I've got for you. Um, The other thing is that that she's talked about yesterday is that she didn't want him to leave college early. Okay. Uh, she, uh, she's people said to her, yeah, but look what he's done, blah, blah, blah. She said, yeah, but she wanted him to stay a kid a little longer. Okay. So it's kind of what all parents want, but she also, uh, wanted him to finish his degree. She said he didn't finish his degree. So she challenged him to not let Jackson, his brother get his degree first. Jackson did. So here's the news. The news is that she said yesterday, Patrick Mahomes is taking some classes anonymously to finish. That's good that he's doing that. Yeah. How does he, how do you take a class anonymously? Well, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, uh, maybe, maybe it's, you know, it's online or whatnot, but he maybe just doesn't want people to know. Maybe he's, I don't know if he's got an assumed name in the class. I have no idea. We're going to go to George uh, Stepanopoulos or something. I don't know. And that wouldn't be a well-known name. And people are like, oh, there's a political contributor in our class here today. <laughs> anyway, that was, the, that was bad. That was a bad made-up name. Anyway, maybe it's... Uh, <laughs> John Doe. <laughs> maybe it's, yeah, Joe Smith. Maybe it's Jamie Lint, you know. I'm here taking classes with Jamie Lint. But anyway, I thought that was pretty cool okay. that he's trying to finish his degree. Steph Curry did that. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be cool for Mahomes to be here and walk across the stage at United Supermarkets Arena and get his get his Texas Tech degree? It would be cool for Patrick to get his degree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whether he comes here and walks across yeah. the stage or not it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but, I mean, for him to get his degree, that'd be anyway, good. I thought that was I mm-hmm. thought that was an interesting little tidbit there. Yeah, that probably later on he's going to want to tell his kids. Yeah, you know, 
I graduated. I, I finished mm-hmm. whatever. It wasn't easy to go back and, and you know, that. I didn't have to, all that right. good stuff. Right. But, but I wanted to. Wanted to. Wanted to be known as the Texas Tech graduate. So, I mean, I'm presuming it's here. Okay. I don't think he's, I don't think he's transferred to another university. <laughs> um, I mean, UMKC or something. <laughs> right. I don't know. Right. God, God, hope not, right? Maybe he's just going to go to Missouri. Be a, oh, that would be that'd be terrible. He's he's not going to do that to us. He's not going to be a Missouri grad. <clears throat> He'd be a Red Raider grad. I'm just going to be going to Kansas State, actually. Oh um, yeah, that'd yeah. Even be, State. That'd even mm-hmm. be either mm-hmm. any three of those would be bad. You don't want to be a kangaroo. That's what they are at UMKC. They're the kangaroos. They they've kind of changed that up a little bit. I don't know if they're the kangaroos now, but they. They were the UMKC Kangaroos. They mm-hmm. literally had a kangaroo as their mascot. Isn't uh, our former coach there? One of them, yeah. Yeah, coach. The BAM guy. No, no, Coach Whitaker. Isn't she there? No, no, no. Coach Whitaker was an assistant there. Oh, she, before? She, she, she was, was there. there no, she was there before. She was the, before, she, she was okay. the coach. She was, she was the head coach there. Okay. No, it's uh, Joe. Um, God, what's the guy's name? The Bam guy? Yeah, building a monster guy. He worked for Tubby Smith. He was down at San Angelo State for a while. Joe Esposito. Joe Esposito, there thank you. you. Go. Well thank done, you. Jamie. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. He could be going to Wichita State and become a shocker. Because, oh, you know, he does God a lot of shocking us. things. No, no, mm-hmm. no, he's not. He's not, he's not. Now you guys are mocking me. Okay. Now no. What? <laughs> now you're mocking me. <laughs> Why would you say that, Chuck? <laughs> Uh, somebody says, are the classes at Tech or University of Phoenix? Well, they have online classes at Texas Tech. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, you know, they've got plenty of plenty of online classes. I mean, there's plenty of plenty of athletes that are going yeah. to school here. Plenty of students that are going to school here that never step inside the classroom, but yet they're here in town, which just befuddles me. And there's plenty of students and athletes over the course of time who said. I also was going anonymously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just could you just didn't know I was there. Right, right. Yeah. You didn't know I was there. But really I was. I was. I, I and that's for regular students and I, student athletes as I well. Have a, yeah. I have a feeling that uh, that you could have been one of those people that were in, in class every day, all day. And uh and people like, Were you in my class? Because you probably sat quietly and didn't say a word and you know, participated when you needed to, did your homework, did, went about your business, no no shenanigans whatsoever, just clocked in, clocked out, and moved on. Well, there were some classes that were smaller, where yeah. you were forced to kind of know the people around you, but in the larger ones, no mm-hmm. question. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I can remember, you know, I moved to Texas in my junior year and went to high school in, in Tyler for one year, and... I kid you not, Chuck Hines, I would go days at a time without speaking a word. Not the, through the whole, I mean, <laughs> days at a time. Unless somebody spoke to me, I was not, I mean, I was a new kid and wasn't, you know, just went about my business or whatever mm-hmm. and did my thing. And unless I was, until I was playing on the tennis team, I just, I just did my thing. Did they think you were like, like did, didn't have a voice box or something that you were... I don't think anybody thought anything. They didn't even like. They just all the girls probably like. Oh man, the cute guy over there. He doesn't talk at all. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get to him. No, I would go to my job and talk there. <laughs> would you? I had plenty of friends outside of school, mm-hmm. but just not in school. Is this and that, at the and that, and there was. I mean, I wasn't bothered by it or whatever. Referee shoe store that you worked at was this at the locker room? No. Oh no. El Chico's. El Chico's. Yeah. Oh, El Chico's. Yeah. We used yeah. to have one here. Yeah. They're they're Macula now. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I was not whining about it. that. Was just me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody here's here's a funny person. They wanted to know if you went to Tyler John Tyler. No, you went to what? No, House. I went to no, I went to Tyler Lee. Tyler Lee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tyler John Tyler. I lived in White House after I graduated from Tech and moved back. I got you. Got you. But I called games for jo- Tyler John Tyler. <laughs> but you never called it Tyler John Tyler. Did now you? it's just Tyler High. Tyler High. No, I just called it John Tyler. But now it's Tyler High. Tyler High. Because John Tyler apparently is a bad person. Okay, they've whitewashed him out of there. Yeah, he's speak. he's not good anymore. He's not good anymore. Tyler yeah. John Tyler. So you Man, can't say that anymore. I know. It's, it's just it's, Tyler High. It's kind of like Midland and Tyler Legacy. Legacy. Yeah. yeah. Just, just I get it, <clears throat> but they could have probably come up with a different name. Uh, the legacy part? Yeah. Yeah. Midland legacy. Because their legacy is 
they were Lee. That's their legacy. Mm. So they might as well just still be Midland Lee. That'd probably make a lot of people down there happy. I bet there's, I bet there's people down there that are still burning about that. Probably so. Clearly probably there's so. one in there that still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what they could have gone with instead of legacy. I don't hate the legacy thing, whatever. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Jamie, did you hate having to move your junior year? Oh, man. You have no idea. Yeah. It's really, I mean, I went from a, any kid. I went from a small farming community in central New York where there's 36 people in my graduating class to, you know, city in Tyler, Texas, where, you know, there was, I don't know, 500 or so in my class. And I didn't talk like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> right. So literally yeah, and figuratively. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, yeah, I kind of, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't thrilled with my parents for moving me my junior year in high school, but yeah. it is what it is. It, you know, every, we would not have come to know you every had that not experience. And well, the truth of the matter is I moved back to New York from my senior year and graduated from my old high school. Well, I know what you yeah. came to tech when, with, because lived, of buddy. lived on my own from my senior year. And, um, yeah, every experience you have in life makes you who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's probably why I kind of. I I grew up in a hurry, living yeah. by myself for my senior year. So. Yeah. Uh, this I feel for you, JL. I did three high schools in three different towns. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It'd be extremely yeah. difficult. It wasn't too. the people. T- I mean, it's just again, I didn't sure, feel like no. people were mean to me. No, I just, no, I I get just, it. I'm me, and I, yeah. I don't I'm not looking to make conversation. So it's, it was as much about me as it was anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you, and yet you talk five hours a day for a living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lost a bet somewhere along the way. I took the wrong fork in the road, Heinz. <laughs> right, and you end up with me and McGuire. Oh, boy. You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.